I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited to have you here with me today to show you how to flat iron your hair for volume. Yes, that's right. I styled this hair with a flat iron, which I suppose is not that surprising because it is long and straight. However, let me show you how I used to look when I would use a flat iron and I'll show you a picture of myself about two years ago. And here it is on one side or the other. And as you can see, it's not a great picture, but my hair was just extremely flat. There was no volume, no body in my hair, and I have to say I have learned over time a great way to style my hair to give myself volume. And I will say, if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging, and even if you're not 63 like me, if you're 20, 30, or 40 years old, I think it's always good to have an older YouTuber in your stash to show you the products that really work. Because when I was 30, I could really live a hard life and you know not do much to my skin at all, but still I would look wrinkle-free and wonderful. And sometimes it helps to see an older woman because you know the things that she is doing that work and the things that don't work. So anyway, I would love to have you subscribe. And also, if you could give this video a thumbs up, if you like it, that would be great. Okay, let me get into this. And I will say, I think the main reason that my hair looks so much more thick is some of the products I'm using. And I will show you every step of styling my hair in just a few minutes, but I cannot get past this without showing you again the Eye Restore. And I have used it for almost a year now, but I will link a video below if you're interested in learning more about this. I have several videos showing my progress along the way. And I am so glad that the Eye Restore people reached out to me about a year ago and offered me their device because quite honestly, I was starting to get major bald patches in my hair. Like for instance, whenever I turn in a video to show something that's off camera, I would turn and then I would see the video back and I would be horrified because I would have like splotches of bald hair showing on both sides. And so it got to where I would just cut those things off or put more video over it because I was embarrassed that my hair was falling out. Plus I was kind of horrified. And if you're interested in growing more hair, then you might check out that I Restore video because maybe it will work for you. And they do have a one year money back guarantee. However, even if I had paid for this device, I would not be sending this back because I am so happy at the fact that my hair is regrowing. Okay, again, in this video, I will be showing you how to use a flat iron to get volume and I'll be showing you all the products I have used to really help my hair look much thicker. Okay, I'm going to show you how I style my hair and I start with a paddle brush and I just toweled this off. I used to use one of those fancy towels that supposedly was a little easier on your hair and was supposedly more absorbent, but it was tiny and I just don't know, I didn't like it. I just went back to using a normal towel on my hair. I try everything. I'm kind of a beauty guinea pig, so I have to try everything. So I just brush it out there. There that is. This is just a little brush that I buy from Walmart. I buy these all the time. I love them and they're like $3. I'll link them below. Before I get into my products that I use, let me show you what I use to shampoo my hair. And I love these products. This is the Kenra Volumizing Shampoo. I use that in the shower. And then I use the Kenra Volumizing Conditioner. And if you see my empties, I have rebought this uh, maybe two or three times, at least two times, if not three. I love those shampoos. Okay, now let me show you my styling products that I use. The first is the Joyco 07 Firm Hold Design Mousse. And I just shake that up and then I get a good dollop of that. Just like any mousse, there it is. And I put it all over the front of my hair and kind of into the back too, because I like that little bit of a bubble in the back. So I just kind of put it all over that area there. That's that mousse, and I've tried many mousses, <laughs> many mousses, and this is by far the best one. I tried the Schwarzkopf Maniac Mousse. Let me see, where's the darn lid? Okay, there's the lid. And I really liked it. I thought it was great and really held, but over time it made my hair really dry. And the Joyco does not do that, so I really do like that. Now, the second step is to use this Boldify Hair Thickening Spray and I just get that off of Amazon. I'll put all the links below. I just give it a good spray all over my hair. I think one of our problems with hair products is sometimes that we don't use enough. And so I'm always a more is more, is more girl. Okay, and the third thing I use, which I love this, and I bought this probably eight or 10 times. I mean, a lot. A lot. This is the Mark Anthony Instantly Thick Hair Thickening Cream. 
and it just looks like a little cream, kind of like that, just a little off-white cream. And I put this mostly on the bottom part, but then I go back up through the top and just do a little bit through the top. And it really does thicken your hair. As you can see, I use a lot of volumizing thickening products because my hair is extremely thin. And up until a year ago, before I got my Dyson actually, my hair never really looked that great. And I think it's looking better. Okay, now that is all the products that I use. So let me wipe my hands off. Okay, next, this is my Dyson hair dryer. And I did a video about this and I'll link it hopefully up there in a card. And if you click that, then you'll see it after this video. It will give you more in-depth info about this, but I absolutely love this blow dryer. It blows my hair like super fast. And in fact, I have my husband's cell phone here and I'm going to time it for you. It used to take me, you know, 10 minutes to blow dry all of this hair using a standard blow dryer. And this, I've tested it before and it's under four minutes, which is amazing. We'll see if it holds true today. And I think over time, the Dyson has really been one of the reasons my hair is looking so much better. It is really amazing in keeping your hair non-damaged and blow drying it very rapidly. And because I'm going to be timing this, I'm not going to be stopping the process. So I'll just put my camera on fast and I'll blow dry my hair. And you'll see that I do the roots, you know, the wrong way on both sides and I do the back the wrong way and basically you can see how I do it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start the timer and I'll start the Dyson. stopwatch. Uh, there it is, 3.45 and 0.15, whatever that is. So that was under four minutes. Let's see how dry we are. And I'm pretty darn dry. And I get it to where it's mostly dry, maybe the last 5% non-dry because I'll get that with my flat iron. Okay, that is my hair all blow dried. And I just love that Dyson dryer. I'm going to do a video about it in a few months after I've used it for a year, but I think it's really making a huge difference in my hair and it is expensive. It's over $400, but I have to say, if it broke, I would buy it again. That's how good I think it is. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the flat ironing portion of my hair. And to do this, I use this wonderful little thing that I've used for literally probably 20 years. This is the Aquage Beyond Shine. And I just spray that all over my hair. It's really a good protectant in terms of your heating tools, but it also gives you a little more shine, which my hair does not really have shine, but I, uh, you know, I, I do the best I can with it because if it has body for me, because it's kind of over processed blonde, it doesn't have much shine. And this is my irresistible me flat iron. And I got this from them free, but I have many flat irons, including like a chi, and some really high-end flat irons. This one is not nearly so expensive, and I love it, and I'm using it on 410. I usually try to say 390, but I'm kind of in a hurry today. So there is that one piece, and then I'll get a few pieces up here. Basically, I'm just trying to flat iron the top hairs because I'm going to put them in my little comb, and this is the comb. And I get these from Walmart. Everybody's always asking how I get the buff. I call it the buff, but that's the little puff in the back, the little puff comb. I'll just get these top hairs. Now I usually go over each piece twice. Sometimes I brush the pieces between. It's really probably better if I do that. 
And in the back, I always have kind of waviness. And I sort of like accept it. If I work really hard, I can get the waves out. But a lot of the time, I just realize nobody's perfect and it's the back of my hair. So I kind of let it go. But I do love going to the salon because JoLynn is always able to get the back of my hair smooth. We'll see how we do, but I'm not trying particularly hard on that. Okay, so now I'm going to put this first piece in before I style the rest of it. And basically, I just kind of buff this up. And let me get another little brush here. This is a little rat tail comb brush. And I'll just kind of do this. Sometimes I put a little of that bed head in there, but mostly I haven't been. I think the volumizing shampoos that I'm using really, really help that. Let me look over in my mirror here. I'm trying to use the camera as a mirror and that could result in very ugly hair. So I just get some height there. Then the idea is I'm just going to start flat ironing all these little pieces. And again, I go through each one a couple of times. And now I'm really trying to brush each piece because I think that helps make them flatter. Here we go. See how that works. And my hair is wavy, especially underneath. And I always fight that. I guess we always want what we can't have. And I would love to have that glassy straight hair, but I don't. I have frizzy, wavy hair. And everybody tries to get me to curl my hair. And number one, it will never stay curled. And that's odd because I do have waves, but it will not stay curled and it frizzes when I curl it. And something about curly hair, I just don't feel comfortable in. I feel like I'm trying to be like little Bo Peep and failing, which is too bad. I loved it a few years back when the flat iron hair was really in. I know it's not really in anymore, but I had a style analysis done basically of my whole body. You know, what looked good on me in terms of style. And in terms of hairstyle, they said that I needed to mimic my rectangular face. And so that's what I'm attempting to do when I have the kind of long straight rectangles on my hair, which is basically what my style is. But then the book told me that it was important for me to get height out to the side, to widen this, because that's such a narrow face, which was a really good tip. And that was out of that Signia style book, which I totally recommend everybody do. It totally revolutionized my style because it helped me truly know the items that look good on me. And when you know that, you can save a lot of money on buying clothes because you automatically go to those clothes that are kind of proven to look good on you and you don't make a mistake on a lot of items that don't look good on you. So now, I don't have any idea what the back looks like. It's probably still really wavy. Let me look at it in my little round mirror. And I get these little mirrors at Walmart and they're great. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. That is the back of my hair. I'll step away so you can see it. So it is not too bad. We don't have as many curls back there or kinks or waves as I thought we would. Okay, now the second thing I do is I do a two-part flattening system. I use the Irresistible Me flat iron first, and then I use this old Revlon, I guess it is. It's at 410 as well. And let's see, is it Revlon? No, it's ACT or something. It's a super, super old unit. So, you know, the name of it has worn off, and I probably even got it before Amazon. I've had it literally for years. But what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get lift here on the outside of my temples. And you know, it's funny, I did this when I was like in high school and I had no way of knowing that, that actually that was supposed to be what looked good on me, which is getting my hair kind of poofed out to widen this out. But I always did that in high school and I really liked it. And then I'll do this side. And I'm just trying to get a little lift right there. See, there's a little lift there. And then this also helps to just go through the hair again and straighten it out. I found that the flat iron does three-fourths of the work, 
but then this just kind of makes it look more like good quality hair. Let me do this one more time. That's the most important thing for me that this is for is to get that lift on the side. See, there it is. I'll do it on this side. Oh, my hands are shaking. I don't eat breakfast in the morning, so I get a little bit weak in the morning. Okay, that is done in terms of all of that flat ironing. Next, I'm going to use this, and I may use this, sometimes I use this a little bit, but let's get the big part done. And what I'm doing is I'm just ratting this out to the side. I'm trying to get that lift on the sides to where you have the height from the top, and then the lift on the side. Here we go. Then I'm gonna go in the back and do some back there, which sometimes, sometimes I don't do the back when I'm heading off to work and I don't really care that much how I look. But there it is in the back. And I just come around and do it on the side. We'll start here. This side's easier to do than the other, obviously, because I can get right there into that temple. And the whole idea is just to make it really, really big. <laughs> it's huge. It's like a lion's mane. I'm kind of liking that image of a lion. Sometimes when I do my hair, I think, oh, you look just like a lion, which I don't think that's so bad. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just going to kind of smooth that out here. And again, I'm doing this in my cell phone camera. So normally I do it in the mirror. Let me look over here in the mirror. Oh my, I look a little like Methuselah. And I try to get those little flyaways down and sometimes I don't manage to do that very well. That's what the hairspray is for, let's get those down. And then I just keep kind of working with it and seeing what looks good. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Look at the sides, okay, that looks okay. Look at the back. It's okay. Whoa. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And basically I take the best hairspray in the world and I'm convinced of this, I love this stuff. This is the Kenra Volume Spray 25 and it won an Allure Best of the Year Award several years ago and I started using it. And I'm almost out of this one, I ordered two more. I need one for my makeup room and then one for in here. And I spray the heck out of it, trying to get those little ugly things on the top fixed. Okay, they're very good. So here it is, I'll show you all the way around and I hope it looks good, I don't know. There it is on the side. There it is on the back. Step up here, there it is on the side. There it is on the back. And sometimes I'll give it one more spray and I don't touch it all day long. And amazingly enough, when I get home at the end of the day, it looks exactly the same, which makes me really happy. I used to make a mistake when I was younger of thinking that I had to brush my hair throughout the day. And of course that brushed the style out. So I just use the Kenra once or twice in the morning and then I don't touch it all day long. Well, that was a look at how I styled my hair to bring on the volume, and I am so happy to have better hair now because as you could tell by the picture that I showed you earlier, in my younger years, in fact, even up to about a year ago, I really had very thin, very limp hair, and I am so happy to have found a way to pump up my hair and give it the look of more volume. Okay, at this point in the video, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I was going to read a card because I really didn't have much to tell you, I didn't think, and then I remembered that for the last couple of days, I've been feeling kind of down. And the reason is because we had a fantastic weekend. We had some friends in from Tulsa all weekend long. We went to a concert. It was super, super fun. But during the course of the weekend, you know, when you have guests, you, you have a lot of things around the house that you wouldn't normally eat. I had lots of nuts, which I really shouldn't eat because I have GI issues when I eat nuts. I had lots of sugary stuff, cookies. I had a couple of cheesecakes. I bought one at Sam's and then I saw a better looking one at Target and I bought that one. You know, I froze the one at Sam's and it, you know, is going to be used at a family dinner later. But anyway, we had a lot of cheesecake around and on the last day they were here, in fact, the day they left, 
I ate not one, but two pieces of that cheesecake. I think I was nervous because even though I love having guests, it also makes me extremely nervous. And so I had all that sweet stuff around, all that really good high calorie stuff, and I indulged. And I think what happened is that after they left for the few days after, I just kind of went through a slump. You know, all of the happiness over the weekend, all of the sugar, everything was great, and then just, oh, I felt terrible. And in fact, I would work all day till like four o'clock and I would get home Monday and Tuesday and I took a nap. I just really had no energy and I was letting myself go around and feel bad. And then I happened to see the end of a video that I did maybe a month ago in which I mentioned that at one point I was feeling negative, feeling a little depressed, and that instead of going with that, I made myself listen to an affirmation tape and it just pumped me up and I felt much better. But I will link a little affirmation tape below and I want to remind all of us, especially myself, that in any given moment, we have a choice of our attitude. In fact, sometimes that's about the only thing that we have a choice of is our attitude, whether good or bad. So friends, as we're going through our days, let's remember that our attitude is really our choice and that in any given moment, we can decide to go with the flow and be negative or we can pump ourselves up, be grateful and be positive. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.